Good evening and welcome to Inside the Borough, presented by, hosted, presented, founded by uh, FAOLSNest.com. My name is Dan, uh, known as FAU for show on the forum. I'm here with, with Jack Whitten, who's known as Jack Whitten III on the forum, and Aaron, uh, known as USMC Owl. Tonight, uh, we're going to talk about, we'll talk about a couple different things, starting off with Middle Tennessee. Uh, we'll talk about some Conference USA things that are going on. Uh, basketball has been in the news lately, so we'll talk about them, and uh, we'll kind of wrap it up from there. So uh, this week, the Owls are facing Middle Tennessee State University. Uh, egg, exactly. Uh, Jack and I were talking earlier. Uh, there's there's pr- a pretty tough time finding another team you hate more than Middle Tennessee. I don't hate is such a strong word, but it's the word in this case. I think uh, Jack used the word hate. I cut that part of the conversation. <laughs> uh, other than FIU, the Middle Tennessee just – I don't know why. It's not like we have a rivalry with them. It's not much of a rivalry considering they're 8-3 and three against us. Um, we have not – I don't think we've won a game since, what, 2007, I think, is our last win. Um, last year had a pretty – amazing, amazing game. Uh, went into overtime that we ended up losing. Uh, but they are 8-3 and three against us. They are coming in 5-5. Five and five. We are 3-7. and seven. Uh, <laughs> We got a lot, I think, uh, guys, we got a lot going uh, against us. I think it's senior day. They need one more win to get the bowl eligibility. There, there's a lot. I think we're, we're, we're kind of running into a buzzsaw. It's such a, a, a cliche to think, but it's not going to be an easy game. No, it it's really not. I mean, the team the team is probably from what I heard the morale is kind of like in the dumpster after the North Texas game. They realized they had a chance to fight back for bowl eligibility and they blew it. So I mean, but as far as the coaching staff goes, they got the same thing. That they got to do every game week. Get the team prepared. Get them ready to play. But Coach Partridge is kind of in an interesting position here. Does he go for trying to play the spoiler and force Mount Tennessee to play for their bowl eligibility next week? Or does he do the eval route and treat these final two weeks of the season as an eval time and look at the younger players that will be on campus next year? So, Well, I, I'm certainly hoping that uh, Coach Partridge and the boys uh, try to play spoiler over there at Floyd Stadium. Um, as Dan said, uh, and I'll, I'll speak for the students and some football players I've talked to this week. Uh, we dislike Middle Tennessee a lot. Um, they've had our number in football, basketball. I mean, they've even done pretty well against our great baseball program recently. And I would really, really love to spoil their senior night, uh, you know, right as they try to fight for bowl eligibility before they play UTEP. Um, looking at this game, uh, Coach Stock still is still their head coach. He's been their head coach about eight, nine years now. Um, Good guy. You knew even after they lost their uh, quarterback for three years, uh, Logan Kilgore, uh, that mm-hmm. Coach Stockstill would still have enough firepower to keep this team rolling where they're at. Um, and their new quarterback, who's a sophomore, Austin Grammer, has performed fairly well, especially earlier in the season, uh, but has kind of went back to where he was expected to perform as a uh, first-year starter as a sophomore. Uh, so hopefully we can catch them on another off night uh, like they had uh, last week in Miami. I think, yeah, you, you kind of hit it. I think in order for us to um, come away with a victory, a couple of things that I, w- I was looking at, they they seem to have a tendency to turn the ball over. Um, they had five turnovers against um, uh, against FIU. I, r- I read that they turn uh, if they turn the ball over more than once, and, and they turn the ball over more than once in every single one of their losses. So, we can somehow create some turnovers, and and when you're on the road, uh, you got to turn those turnovers into points, and not just points, but touchdowns. Uh, so that's a, a couple uh, of things that F, things that FAU should focus on is uh, making sure that we win the turnover battle and win it by one or two, uh, or more than one, I should say. Um, and uh, it's 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 just going to be. <clears throat> it's just going to be uh, be a, a tough thing. Currently, we are seven point underdogs, which I'm a, a kind of surprised that's not a little bit higher. Um, but it, it's it's going to be tough with dealing with injuries. It seems Jay Warren is going to be back, which will hopefully be a good boost if he holds on to the ball now. <laughs> yep. Um, 
But as far as injuries go, I mean, defensive line and linebacker have just been decimated by uh, by injuries. Uh, offensive line has kind of been shuffled. They've been inconsistent this year. So uh, I don't know. What, what, are you, what are you guys looking for? What, what do you – what do you what do you think is going to happen? Oh, that's going to be a tough one because if we start off slow like we have been the past few weeks, we could be in real trouble by again by halftime. But if they maybe start out a little faster, we have a shot. But like you said, our defense has been riddled with injuries. There's a lot of young guys playing on that defensive front end and that linebacking core. So you got to – I mean – Play smart, play heads up football like the coach has been preaching all season, and definitely try your hardest to knock off Middle Tennessee State. So, uh, yeah, I'm a little bit worried as well with front seven depth uh, on the defense side of the ball. Um, we're going to expect Middle to basically run every single offense, every offense that every other team has run against us. Uh, you know, short passes, bubble screens. Uh, throwing it left and throwing it right and running it right down our throat a couple times. Um, so the depth in the uh, lack of veteran leadership in the front seven really worries me. Uh, hopefully, you know, Dijon and Cravon and Damien and the guys can force a couple turnovers, like you said, Dan, uh, how they are with their uh, turnover rate and losses. So hopefully we can shut down the pass. Um, but it's it's going to be difficult. It's going to be difficult. I mean, if even if they do go out to a lead, though, hopefully they can blow a twenty-one to three lead like they did last week. So you know, again, yeah. who knows? I mean, I'm pretty sure no one ex- saw that game coming. That that uh, that comeback. I turned the game off after that. Actually, it's twenty-one yeah. to three. Like, oh no way! It's it's over. And there you go. Yeah. Well, I, again, I'm hoping that that it, it all depends on which Quez Johnson shows up. You know, if it's the Quez Johnson that was in the beginning of the year. Then and we don't start super super slow. I think we have a chance. Uh, if we if we start out slow, we turn the ball over. You know, deep in our own territory, we you know they go up fourteen nothing, seventeen seven, seventeen three, something like that. I think it's going to be pretty tough for us to to, to come back, uh, especially especially being on the road. Um, but hopefully, you know, hopefully we can we can kind of. I, I hope that I I think that probably most coaches. I'm hoping and I thought I hope. Uh, Coach Partridge would do this is, you know, like Herm Edwards says, is you play to win the game. Don't don't worry about evaluation and and freshmen and stuff like that. You still have something to play for. um, And and there's still – you don't necessarily need to to put all the the freshmen and just kind of fold, I guess you could say. Yeah. So – I just, I just really want to ruin their dreams. That's all I want. The players want it too. <laughs> hopefully, yeah. hopefully it won't be too cold up there in Murfreesboro or however they pronounce it over there. Murfreesboro, yeah, yeah. Hopefully, hopefully, uh, we'll, we'll, uh, hopefully we can pull the upset. But um, all right. So I guess uh, moving right along, we basketball has been in the news, like I said lately. Uh, yesterday or uh, two days two days ago, we picked up uh, pretty. I don't want to say our biggest recruit ever, but a pretty solid uh, three-star recruit out of Lake Worth. Uh, I, I'm totally going to butcher his name. Uh, <laughs> Jantel Cilia? Jean-tel Cilia? It sounds good you to me. Probably I come back. You probably did better than I would have gave it a yeah. shot. So we're, we're excited. It, it, uh, I, his, I mean, a, a highlight reel is just that. It's, it's all the highlights. But he looks to have some size. He's, I think he's 6'6", six, 6'7". Six, six, Yep. Um, and he's, he's pretty athletic. I mean, he can put the ball on the floor. Um, he can definitely finish at the rim, and he also has a pretty decent jumper. So uh, he picked us over ECU and FGCU and a couple other um, bigger or bigger programs. So nice to, nice to see us uh, keep a, a local kid home. Yeah, it, it's, so far it looks like it's working for football recruiting. Uh, Coach Curry for basketball um, is a great recruiter. He has great ties being an NBA head coach. Uh, also being the president of the NBA Players Association. And it's he's a player that, you know, high school guys would want to play for. So uh, hopefully we can keep our local guys. We have some very solid high school basketball talent. If we keep them here, who knows what can happen a few years down the line. Yeah, like you guys said, get the right coach in, in place, right guy who can definitely, you know, recruit well. And guys who want to – and a coach who wants guys who want to play for definitely is key, you know, being successful, especially in a uh, – program like FAU's, which is, I think, what, one winning season in the past five, six years, something like that? Got to be more. Uh, 
not until 2009 when we won the Sun Belt. That's probably the last uh, time I can think. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, we won the Sun Belt regular season, and I think we went near 500 the year after that. Uh, but then every year after that, the team has just degressed. Yeah. I was. I um. I saw. Uh. F, obviously, we all know FGCU's been um, had a lot of success. Their starting point guard was a an FAU commit for the longest time, uh, and then he flipped it to you. And every time, I mean, he's doing really, really well. He's one of the best uh, as far as assist point guards uh, in the country. And I'm like, I look at him, I'm like, ah, <laughs> what. Uh, what could have been? What could have been? But uh, and unfortunately, basketball played uh, Harvard tonight, and they got beat. What was the final score? Uh, Seventy-one to forty-nine. We cut it to uh, we we were cut, the first half. Harvard went on the ridiculously twenty-something uh, to twenty-something uh, to I don't know four or five run and kind of put the game out of reach. We got it to within thirteen with about I think it was six minutes left. Yeah, and six they, or five minutes. Yeah, they uh, they went on another run. So it was uh, it was frustrating. We had the lead early. Uh, then Harvard actually, believe it or not, put their real starters in. Harvard mm-hmm. is a top twenty five program up there. We beat them last year in the borough. Uh, pretty soundly. Uh, expected to at least put up more of a fight uh, tonight. Yeah. But it wasn't the case. Yeah, I guess I I, th- I mean I I've made the uh, mention of it before as far as recruiting goes, where I was talking about. You know, with football, we're playing with lower quality Sunbelt players. Um, that's what we're playing with in, in basketball. I mean, uh, Kelvin Penn is not a Conference USA starting forward. Uh, no. In, Great, in, good defender. I think he's very underrated defensively. Good defender. But, uh, but the ball keep, yeah. I mean, I, I, one of the things that watching the, the Warner game and, and some of the games I've, I've seen is um, – how how is he catching the ball in the post and not Raffington? Like R- Raffington should touch, should touch the ball in the post every single time down the floor, yeah. and he's always on the perimeter. I don't know. That that's a I mean, bit of a frustrating thing. But. Isn't he from Germany? Maybe it's a European thing. I don't know. Like over there in Ger- uh, Europe, the big guys like to go outside uh, instead of in the yeah. paint. Uh, I was really impressed with the freshman walk on Justin Macy, uh, Massey, mm-hmm. Macy, Massey. Uh, yeah, play, played very well. Uh, very surprised by his past few. Started uh, tonight. I might have been his first. I'm not sure if he started against Warner. But I see Hotley led the team in points tonight. And I, I think those two guys together at the guard position can can be very fun to watch if you yeah. down the line. I, and it's also we have to talk about depth as well. Um, you know, uh, Botley is, is a playmaker. Um, he can definitely – when he's on, he can, he can go up against anybody – um, but then the you know coming off the bench, who are we going to have coming off the bench? Yeah, I mean, uh, Javi is really the only name that comes to mind off the bench. Uh, um, we did pick up that uh, that uh, I think his name is CJ Terman. Terman. Oh, CJ. How do I think? He, uh, CJ's a freshman. I forgot about it. Yeah, yeah. He, he looked solid. He looked pretty really good in the Warner game. I mean, he he seems to have the most skill. I would say as as far as um, I don't want to say most skill, but he seems to have a, a lot of skill as far as uh, who we have on the team. so He was the highest uh, touted recruit, I believe, since Stefan Moody a couple of years ago, who's now at Ole Miss uh, yeah. after he transferred. Yeah. Um, I think it, he uh, determined something happened. He was going to go to Tennessee, I think, uh, and something happened there. He was committed to Tennessee. Something happened, and so we picked him up. So uh, we need him. We need him. So I guess we'll, we'll kind of finish up uh, moving on from basketball. We'll talk more about basketball as the season progresses, but we'll kind of finish up with some stuff going on as far as Conference USA, um, in football anyway. As you all know, our football season is done next weekend, but Conference USA still has some things to play for. We can we can talk a little bit about that. Um, Marshall, Marshall, I know there's a lot of uh, people and people complaining about Marshall and Conference USA paid all that money for kind of marketing and it, you know, nothing happened because of that. Well, yeah. Jack said before we start, you know, uh, talking about this, you know, you know, the playoff committee is just basically a bit power five, you know, ESPN, you know, throw puppets, you know, they're going to put who they want in there and to the, to the point. But I mean, I mean, Marshall is, a team that, I mean, seriously should have gotten a real 
a real hard look because they are they recruit well, they play well, they're well coached, and they, I mean, the games they've been down in, they've just come roaring back and just basically put the foot down and never let let off the gas. So. Yeah, their their main knock that you know the big power five or cartel fives I'm now calling them <laughs> uh, programs like to say against Marshall is that their strength of schedule is awful, and I give them that that is awful. But when your uh, win margin, your uh, uh, <sighs> victory margin is is 31, 35 points, you know you can't complain about their strength of schedule if they're blowing them out every single week. Yeah, uh, and and un- unfortunately, I mean. We can we can you know push for for Conference USA and for Marshall to get in. It's to, it's just not going to happen. I mean, Marshall they're yeah. they're not a sexy team. They're not a big team. Yeah. Not many not many people out of the out of West Virginia and out of Conference USA and maybe you know teams rooting for the for the little guy. I guess they they don't necessarily care. You know, I think they probably should get a shot, but it's there's just there's there's just not enough. Um, uh, I guess push behind them. People, people, yeah. we care because we're in Conference USA, but there's just not a people outside outside that care. If the media is not going to care about them, then the general public won't. I mean, it's just sad to see that you know their victory margin is so large, um, and then you see a team with three losses like Minnesota, um, yeah, be number twenty five two straight weeks after losing. Yeah, the loss to Ohio State, but it's like they they have the exact same amount of wins to top yeah. twenty five teams as Marshall. Zero, yeah. <laughs> but but there aren't Marshall's undefeated at least. It's it's, yeah. it's a, getting laughable. Yeah, that whole strength of schedule on their OOC really hurt them. You know, for the push for the you know seriously look. I mean, if they would have beaten teams like an Alabama, a Nebraska, you know, like teams that we had to play, I think they would have gotten a, a more serious hard look. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's let's see what happens this weekend. Uh, they have to travel to Birmingham. There's a lot of stuff going on with the UAB program and the Board of Trustees, mm-hmm. uh, which is seen as a puppet of sorts uh, for University of Alabama and Tuscaloosa. UAB has a lot to play for. Marshall is not the same team on the road that they are at home. They're great at home, not so much on the road as we saw uh, with FAU in Boca yeah. last year and Huntington yeah. this year. Um, so UAB is playing for a lot, and they're a solid team. They put a good number on us, so that should be a really interesting game. Let's see if Marshall can get out of that one. If so, then I think it's time to put him in the top twenty-five. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, at least in the in the uh, they're in the top twenty-five in the coaches yeah. AP. Coaches AP. It, it, well, I guess in the one that counts. I guess you could say. Yeah. Uh, well. Uh, what, let's see. What what time? The game's at seven o'clock. It's on American Sports Network. I think is what. Yep. It is. Our game or Marshall? Our game. Yeah, it's, it's on seven on ASN. Yeah, whatever yeah. they call it now. If you look on Comcast, I'm not sure. I think they said it's the local uh, channel 15, maybe. Um, and I think that I think American the American Network uh, they stream it online, uh, so you'll probably be able to find it online. Um, so if there's anything else here, and I think um, I think that about does it. Hopefully, we can we can uh, pull the upset against Middle and, and ruin their senior night and uh, have have something to play for uh, coming home. So, yeah. um, I guess that about wraps it up uh, for Jack and Aaron. Again, my name is Dan. Uh, you can find us. Uh, remember, always on Twitter at Inside the Burrow. Uh, you can check us out. This is always posted to YouTube. You can subscribe to YouTube so you can always get this. And also make sure to check out FAULSNest.com. So, again, um, thank you all for watching. And uh, we'll, we'll see you guys around. Go Owls. Go Owls.